They gotta, they gotta learn how to sell. And Canelo is selling now with this whole English thing. Right. I know you well, like that, English Canelo better. Don't get me wrong. That that's most important. Mm -hmm. The one thing is this: that you have to be, you have to be the people's champion all over the world. Absolutely, that, it counts, and not just because a lot of times, uh, a lot of fighters, you know, they uh, Duran was that way. Roberto Duran, he he knew how to speak English, but mm -hmm. he never spoke English on camera because he didn't want to, um, I guess, make his country look bad or being defiant to him. That's crazy. See, and and I I've been around Canelo for years now, and I'm like, yo, why doesn't? Cause he would speak English to us off camera. I'm like, why doesn't he do it? And I asked him one time. He's like, I like to do everything the right way. I like to do. Yeah, he wanted to make sure he could speak and, good before you know he actually spoke out in public. He want he wants to be confident. You could tell. When I was a casual, I thought as a casual, I spoke like a casual, and I looked at boxing like a casual. But when I became a hardcore, I put away all those casual things. This is Michael Rogers, and welcome to Bodywork Box. Welcome back. It's Michael Rogers. Welcome to Bodywork Boxing. And since everybody want to keep it a hundred. Let me just give my little two cents. We're talking about one Mr. Jordanis Ugas. You know, let's talk about Ugas real quick. He got a big upcoming fight. He's the WBA champ. He's getting ready to unify with Errol Spence Jr. And Errol Spence Jr. actually has the WBC and the IBF. Got a big fight coming up, I believe, on April the 16th. And when you look at Ugas, you know, you look at the physique, he got the physique, he got the Cuban style boxing. You know, he's always, you know, here lately, especially after the victory of Manny Pacquiao, he's been coming out and you've been seeing him at the fights and he's smiling. And you see his lady and his little one and, you know, he seems like he's real, you know, he's, he's happy to take pictures and, you know, he always seems like he got a positive mindset and he always clean. He's either doing the all black or the all white. Look like he got a little flavor, you know what I'm saying, in the closet. Look like he got a little style, a little prestige about the way he dressed. So I was thinking, man, just like I've said this before in my other videos, you know, he got the resume. He beat Jamal James. Um, I'm one of the people that think that he beat Sean Porter, just like a lot of people. He didn't get the nod as far as the judges, but he did actually beat Sean Porter in my book. Uh, Jamal James, he beat Ray Robertson. In the amateurs, he beat Bud. Um, he has a, a list of people that he bought coming off his biggest victory in, in uh, Manny Pacquiao. He's getting ready to face your, uh, Earl Spence. You know, he's running towards the smoke, unlike some other people we're not going to mention in this video. And I, I had been saying the only thing that Ugish really needs to do, and this is the page that he should take out of Canelo's book, is just learn a couple phrases. Learn, learn a little bit of English. I'm not sure if he's one of the ones because I think they speak Haitian, Creole, Corsican, uh, Lusemian, Galatian, whatever. You know, I don't really know the languages, but I think I get the England that he understands it, but he doesn't really speak it. And he may be on the, the tip like Canelo was before he actually started speaking it. I just know that when he started saying, you want payday, payday, horrible fighter and all the little things that people say. You fight nobody and all these little things that he say that, you know, kind of make some people go viral. You know, mainly Canelo, a lot of his takes went viral. It just it just connected him with the audience because I know some people, some people in the in the press conferences and in the interviews, if it's an interpreter, they don't have the patience to sit up there and, you know, and listen to the response and listen to the interpreter and then, you know, and really dive in. And then some things get lost in translation. So I'm thinking, man, that would take your level, your, that would take Ugas to the next level if he just 
had a couple phrases, and I'm already on record before. I just wanted to use the boxing voice because it's, it's odd that they actually brought it up. And, you know, Jeff Mayweather was talking about Duran and how, you know, he didn't do it because he thought he would betray his country. I don't think they're going to think you're betraying your country, Ugas. But it's, it is going to help those ticket sales go up, and it's going to get people to know the man behind the gloves. You know, you got a big a big fight. Everybody's trying to discount Ugas right now going into this Earl Spence fight. I'm not one of them. I was one of the ones who have a video with him beating Pacquiao before, you know, when everybody was doubting it, you know. So we can't discount Ugas now because if you discount Ugas now when Earl beat him, it's just going to be another thing that they say, oh, man, like, who was Ugas? That's what they're saying now. I'm like, I don't understand. What was this energy when Canelo was going for that third strap? What was that energy when Canelo was about to fight Billy Joe? And Kayla Plant was waiting in the wings like Bud waiting in the wings. Where, where was all that energy? But nobody want to see that fight now. But it's a good fight. It's a, it's it's a it's a sneaky good fight. And even though I am man down strap season, big fish, I still think that this is a good fight. You know. But that's the only thing I think, man. If Ugas just incorporate a little bit more English, just a couple phrases, man. So that the, he can ingratiate himself with the U.S. boxing audience and the boxing fans, man. I think it'll take the that level up there as far as it'll. It, it's definitely going to spike in the ticket sales, you know, and it's going to help us, you know, pretty much know you and know how you talk, know what your what your flavor is like, you know, without it being subject to interpretation. That's all I had, though. You know, that's my little two cents on the matter. I look forward to that fight. A nice fight, a good fight, you know what I'm saying? A sneaky good fight in my opinion. Like, comment, and subscribe. You know, here where we feed the clones and all subscribers matter. And we don't take things for face value. We do that body work. All right. I believe you. But my tummy can't help. Get down on your knees and tell me you love me. And I do what I do. And he knows what I'm about to tell him right now. It's Mr. Keep running your mouth. That's what I do. Uh, I just feel like I'm the champ, and at the end of the day, I'm just, uh, I'm just fighting my focus. It doesn't matter. Inside, outside, I can just fight. So I just feel like if you, if you get down to the wire, and you gotta lock it up, I'm out on top. Fire, like I said before, and I'm sitting on the glass. So.